Hello, my name is Dave Robinson. Welcome to my workshop. Some 30 years ago, I built my first O-gauge live steam engine. You may have seen me running her at Telford or at Kettering, or seen one of my videos on YouTube. Raising steam and running live steam engines in O-gauge can appear to be a mysterious art. This video aims to dispel that mystery. Follow these steps and you should easily raise steam and have a successful run. I'm concentrating on internally fired engines because they're the most involved. However, the principles also apply to externally fired engines. It's possible that things may not work out all the time, so I've included a troubleshooting guide at the end to help you out. Before launching into this video, I want to remind you of the Oak Edge Live Steam book. It's a reprint of the articles from uh, in the Gazette by Eddie Cook from the 1970s. They set me on the right road when I started out. Eddie Cook was a master builder of Oak Age live steam engines and produced many fine examples which are true to scale. Indeed, I'll be using one of them later on in the demonstration. First off, you're going to need various things. You've got some light steam oil. This important thing is it does not emulsify with water or steam and therefore can be used in the lubricator for the cylinders and the steam chest etc. You're going to need some water. I used to use deionized water but in actual fact I now just use filtered rain water. Water that comes off our garage roof uh, goes, it gets filtered by a nice good filter and then put it in here and we can use that. And then you're going to need some methylated spirits. I actually I buy mine in 5 litre containers 94% uh, from a well-known site um, on the internet auction site and then decant into these smaller containers for taking around uh, various shows and wherever I'm running. You're also going to need a external blower. It's very important here, the difference between the internal and externally fired engines is that the internal fired engines require a draft in order to draw them. So we've got a little fan here and we'll show this a little bit later, the motor so it blows around. In this little box I've got four AA cells, let's turn that down, and a, a little voltage controller and uh, they, they're actually rechargeable cells, uh, nickel metal hydride which I recharge at the end of each session. Um, so I've got decent power and I know that I'll have enough energy in order to raise steam. Okay, now let's get the engine out and we'll get on with preparing it and raising some steam. I always like to fill the engine up in strictly in this order of the lubricator, then the boiler with the tender and then put the mess in. That way you will make sure you don't forget anything and particularly it's easy to forget putting the lubricator to fill that. So what we're going to do here is first off I'm going to put in a, a little syringe I'm going to fill up with some of the steam oil. It's almost certainly actually since the last run my practice when I finish a run is actually also to clean the drain, um, drain out all the water from the lubricator. So first off this has got a really nice little feature just slacken the drain valve which is at the front there which is barely perceptible on the model what we need to do is then open the lubricator filler valve, take it out there and put the syringe in and it carefully screws on and almost certainly actually it's, we're going to get, oh there we are, get some water squirting out. So that is what we need to get out and now we'll just tighten up the closed valve. Put the filler back on, which is a nice little trick here. Okay, so I've just been hit by the demo effect. I was trying to show how to fill the water and the um, hand pump had actually seized, the lower ball had seized. So um, I've actually, to clear that, I've just actually filled the tender with hot water 
and then pumped it and that actually freed it, everything up. So I'm now going to go through the sequence as I originally intended, which is to show you, you take the filtered water, put it into the tender, almost to the top. Now one of the things to remember that this has an axle pump as well as a, a tender hand pump and the axle pump needs to be primed first so first off we actually open the bypass the bypass open you can now see water is being pumped out straight the way through from the tender pump through the axle pump and then back in straight back into the tender we'll close the bypass we'll pump some water with the bypass closed and that will now go into the boiler itself so we know we have at least some water in the boiler before we start off. Now let's come to the third liquid filling the methylated spirit. You notice the top of the meths tank is actually well above the level of the wicks which will be down about here. This is fine because we actually use a chicken feed system. The tank itself is completely sealed so until air can come in, then no meths can go out. And that's held by a method in the, the a breather pipe in the sump, which is below the tender. So, in order to fill it up, first we make sure that the meths valve is closed. Then we can open the filler valve. Make sure that the tank is actually empty, just so you can draw out anything out. Doesn't seem to be anything much in there, which is good. Now I know from experience that this particular tank will hold 60 cc's of methylated spirit, so let's go back and put in some maths. top back on the meths bottle and then fill the filler cap back in. I will open the meths uh, valve and we should see in a second the meths flowing along. There it goes. That's now filling into the wicks. Now it's about time to light up. So first off, we make sure that the regulator and the blower valves are completely closed. As otherwise, we may find that we won't get up to pressure. Then we put the blower in the chimney and we start it running. Dip a taper and a little bit of meth and light. Light it. I actually like lighting from below. A little bit more energy. Now we can already begin to feel there's a bit of heat in the boiler itself, particularly at the back, it's where the fire is, it's a firebox, it's literally just here. And it takes a bit of time to warm to the front, but it's slowly warming its way through. And relatively quickly you get to a point where it's not possible to keep your hand on the boiler, which is a good indication that we're getting calories from the um, burners into the water. Try switching to the internal blower. This is always good to be able to hear how effective the, it, it is. Almost you can hear what the pressure is after a while just learning how your engine feels. About ready to go. And then to go, what we usually do is make sure that it's in gear because this is slip eccentric, so just wind it one turn round. 
and then holding a cloth over the chimney. There we go, she's in action. You see that there's a bit of smoke coming out. There we go. Open the bypass, and now you can see water being pumped merrily out of it. Actually you can also hear that the engine got a bit faster because it's no longer having to pump against the oil pressure. I just close the bypass again, and you see it stop. You also see that the water level is beginning to go down, and that's because water is being merrily pumped uh, from the tender by the actual pump into the engine itself. One of the important things to remember that with an internally fired engine is you need the draft in order to draw the fire. This means when you come to stop, before you come to a stop, you must open the blower or the fire will go. So now she's stopping. And if we now put it in reverse, which normally just means you're moving the engine back one turn or so, revolution, then you open the, the wheel regulator again. You can see that the level of water has gone down quite substantially in the tender and therefore it's necessary to refill. Pour a little in quite carefully. If you do let the water fall too far, what happens is it starts to suck air into the system. And then of course it can't pump that in, but more importantly, even if you do fill it with water, it's necessary to reprime the system. That means you open the bypass, pump some water through, gets rid of all the air, and then you can close the bypass and it should carry on work. Turn the mess off now, and uh, so you can actually hear that the boiler pressure is slowly reducing. The uh, blower, this intensity of the blower is slowly reducing. This is because, of course, there's uh, less intense fire going into it, and therefore it's uh, slowly losing boiler pressure. Okay, the fire is now out, blown the fire out, and then we should hear the boiler pressure drop quite substantially quite quickly because there's no extra heat going in there. One thing to do before the boiler pressure goes completely is to remove the excess water from the tender. One of the problems can be otherwise that you have a hot boiler which cools and then it sucks the water from the tender into the boiler. Okay, we're almost down to no pressure at all, as you can hear. One thing I like to do before it gets um, completely cold is to open the regulator. So we don't, there's no pressure left, and we open the regulator. If you don't do that, what can happen through the differential expansion is the regulator just almost gets seized on and you just cannot open it. So it's good just to leave it open. I leave the blower open as well uh, when it's going into storage. So that is the end of the run. Time to dispose of the locomotive. Now we come to dispose of the engine. We've let everything cool down a bit. So let's first off drain the lubricator and fill it up with, with oil. Let's take off the filler valve, having first had the drain valve, open that. Fill this little syringe. This syringe actually fits into a screw thread, so we'll tie it up. and. See, there's actually a little bit of water with the oil, and that's water which is condensed. So 
and then we can now close the drain valve. Make sure we've got oil in the lubricator and put the oil filler back on. We had previously siphoned all the water out of the tender tank just to make sure it doesn't get sucked back into the boiler and so this just relieves making sure that there's no more meths and that the meths tank is closed and I always like to make sure my meths tank is completely empty before um, filling it next time just to make sure I don't overfill it and have meths squirting down the breather pipe in then going on which wouldn't be a good idea because I end up with a whole load of meths underneath the engine. There we are, we sucked it all out wasn't that much left. And that's about it. Hello, this is my fault finding guide to identify some of the common problems you may come across when raising steam and running your live steam engine and how to solve them. So first off, my assumption is that you've got an engine which runs well on air and that you've gone through the usual preparation beforehand of oiling all the motion and moving parts with a light oil, get some steam oil into the cylinders via the lubricator, and check that the engine runs freely with no binding points, and that when you have been running it on air, that it'll run merrily on um, 15 or 20 psi. And a note with the no-gauge engines that a car foot pump can provide enough air to get those wheels really spinning. So the first problem you're likely to come across is that the burner does not light. The obvious thing to check is to make sure that the meths is flowing to the wicks and that you don't have a blockage in the feed pipe or an airlock. And that if you do get to that point that the wicks are not wet with water and if they are, the only thing you can really do is replace with new material. I personally use a material called Ultimate Wick, or a ceramic wick material may work. Next problem is that although the boiler seems to be getting hot to the touch, the pressure doesn't reach 20 psi. And the problems are likely to be around the drafting, for example, and, and you can check underneath that the fire is burning bright blue if you use a mirror or something similar to see that underneath the, the, the mess is burning really quite brightly. That the external blower is too weak or the external blower is not making a good seal with the chimney so that the draft essentially is not good enough. That there's a leak in the smoke box, so for example if you've got a removable smoke box door there's not a good seal around that. Or where the pipes go from the smoke box into the steam chest or the bus pipe comes back from the cylinder. That that's not a good fit. There's, there's air can sneak in around the side of there. And then of course that not all the wicks are lit or that they are too small. It can be a leak in the boiler, and by that I don't mean that there's actually it's badly constructed, but rather things like the regulator, the blower valve, are not completely closed, or that the safety valve is leaking. You often do get a little wisp of steam coming out of the safety valve, but maybe you know, just give it a little tap if, if it seems to be too much. Weeping uh, clack feed valve is another problem, and from this you may find that you can see water being pushed back into the tender, um, or that the tender water appears to be warm. And then finally, and this is actually hopefully something you don't happen, is that because you've got no water in the boiler, it's, there's no steam going to be generated. But if it's been running for uh, three or four minutes, it's quite likely you're going to be smelling burnt paint at this point. Once you've been running the external blower for um, a little while and you've got up to about 20 psi, you should be switching to the internal blower. And switching to the internal blower, you're finding you're not able to raise the pressure or not get there fairly quickly to about 50 psi. And the, this is because 
maybe the internal blower is blocked or it's just too weak. And there should actually be quite a strong blast up the chimney. Listen to the sound. It should be making quite a, a hiss as it squirts up the chimney. So the internal blower, if it's misdirected, then you, you'll find that it won't be um, drawing the fire as it should, but the draft from the blower will be actually tending to slightly blow the fire out. And that, of course, is not what you want. It could be a weeping regulator, the blower valve or the safety valve or the clack valve. Oh, and, and do check that when you actually open the blower, you may have knocked the regulator. Just make sure that you've perhaps properly closed. And of course, not all the wicks are actually lit. Some diagnostic checks really are to check the quality and the color of the flames. If it's a really nice blue flame and that you can see it being drawn forwards into the firebox itself. And that does the external blower raise the pressure easily to 50 psi? And that, that's a bit of very strong indicator that the internal blower is not strong enough or that it's been misdirected. Now you've got up to working pressure and you're ready to uh, get the engine onto the track and running. So the first problem is, of course, and it happens with our full mainline engines as well, is that condensation in the steam chest and in the cylinders and you need to clear that out first. So you can do this by turning the engine over by hand several times and push up and down the track. Sometimes you just slightly open the regulator and just push it up and down the track. Remember that steam engines even down to three and a half inch gauge and some gauge one engines as well they have uh, cylinder drain cocks to overcome this problem. A bit of health and safety. Remember that that jet of uh, steam condensate coming up the chimney is hot and dangerous so don't put your face over the chimney. In fact it may be nice and pleasant for both yourself and for others to hold a cloth slightly above the chimney itself so that to catch any of the condensate as it gets uh, ejected up the chimney. When you get to the point that you're trying to move you open the regulator it's still quite reluctant to move um, and you've you've got you've got rid of all the hydraulic lock problems you've got rid of all the condensation so the next thing to do is to check that the oil supply and if you've got an engine that has a steam feed to the lubricator check that it is used at least at the start just to prime the um, oil get some oil pumped into the uh, cylinders and into the uh, steam chest so that the pistons and the uh, valves are all properly lubricated. Another area to look at is the bypass. When the bypass is closed, as the wheels turn, the axle pump is pumping water into the boiler against boiler pressure. Just the sheer effort of doing this can actually make uh, it slower progress for the engine, and particularly sometimes jerky progress. If opening the bypass, the engine is starting to run smoothly, then you know that this is likely to be the problem and where to look at. Hopefully, once the engine is warmed up, then things will actually just improve and you'll be able to continue with the bypass closed, if not completely, at least partially, to pump at least some water into the boiler. What you can find is the engine starts off and it'll, it goes around the track and quite well, but it fails to maintain pressure. So really the problem the main falls into the category. Main problem is that there's just not enough calories going into the boil the water to turn it into steam. So not all the wicks are lit. Maybe some of the wicks are too short, or a wick uh, has got wet with water. Remember, sometimes the condensation condensate can run down the fire tubes and put out some of the wicks. So you need to actually then sort them out could be that the blast pipe is not aligned. Remember on these internally fired engines the aim of the blast is to do what it does in our, our full-size cousins and that is to draw the fire. So it should be pointing up the chimney centrally and that um, the if you put a 1 in 6 template into the chimney itself it shouldn't be sitting proud when it's touching the top of the blast pipe. That'll make sure that the blast is not actually going out without doing its full effect of drawing it. 
It's also worth to make sure that the you've got no more than a one and three angle from the blast pipe to the base of the petticoat pipe so otherwise there is a danger that some of the blasts may seep out and be actually blowing the fire out. Try running with the blower just cracked open. Sometimes if the blasting arrangement is not quite right this can just solve the problem and just keep it going. Does it happen on a blustery day? So even our internally fired locos can be affected by drafts. One of my engines, she seems a bit susceptible to this. I can run it one weekend and she's absolutely fine and the next weekend she just fails to just maintain steam pressure and there doesn't seem to be anything I can do to do it. And the only thing in common seems to be that one is happening on a blustery day and the other is on a nice clean still day. Does it happen with the bypass open um, so that you know the effort to pump water into the boiler and evaporate it may just be too much and that by opening the bypass if the boiler pressure is maintained then you know where to start looking. So you've had a good run it's been running for 10 minutes 15 minutes and your engine suddenly comes to an abrupt halt and then when you rush over to it and you look inside and check the anything what's going on you see that the boiler pressure has dropped to zero. So the cause of this is that the boiler is out of water. So with haste, close the bypass, close the regulator, open the internal blower, or maybe actually put the external blower on, and pump water using the hand pump. And you'll find that the water, as soon as it hits the inside of the boiler, will flash into steam because, of course, the boiler is still quite hot. If the fire's gone out, then you relight. Then you need to go through a process of keep pumping water in as the pressure comes up, you know, and you'll then get to the point where you've got, you know, maybe 20 cc's of water in the boiler, and it's getting safe now to actually consider moving off, and you've got back to working pressure. Of course, what you then need to do is reprimand the fireman for his or her gross negligence in allowing the water level to drop to a dangerously low level. Note, what I've just said applies with meths locos. As soon as the draft drops in the meths, the fire um, temperature drops substantially. In fact, you'll often see that the flames are trying to lick out round the side of the engine because they're desperately trying to find oxygen. With gas and coal-fired locos, it's really necessary to keep the water level up to prevent damage to a boiler. So I, I wouldn't allow the water to go completely dry in one of those type of boilers. The engine slows and the pressure falls. You've had, it's been running for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And really the, the most likely cause then is that the meth is actually exhausted and the, the fire's running low. What you find with the if you've got two or three wick burners is the one the, the wick which is furthest from the meth tank goes out or starts to go out and the others the flames actually reduce as the, the meth drops down so at this point you can either end your run and allow someone else onto the track or and i stress this with care you can go through this sequence open the internal blower or use an external blower if the pressure's dropped below 20 psi. Close the meths valve, open the meths filler valve, check the tank is empty, and then filled with a measured amount of meths, e.g. from a syringe. Close the meths filler cap, open the meths valve, and then check that the fire is still alight and wait for the pressure to be restored. What you often find with this that even if just the rearmost wick tube is alight and maybe even then only barely alight is as, as the meth rushes in and fills up the other tubes the fire is drawn forward and it relights the other tubes without you explicitly needing to do it yourself. Pump in a little water to compensate what has been uh, lost by use by the blower as well of course. Another problem can be as the boiler becomes over full. Your locomotive should be designed so that the axle pump pumps more water in at a higher rate than is actually needed by the boiler and used, consumed by the cylinders. And this means, of course, the boiler slowly fills up. 
and the symptoms are that the you'll have water bubbling out of the safety valve or you'll have a, a snuffling sound coming from the chimney. Now there's a danger if, if you don't do anything about this is the water level continues to rise in the boiler and then you get priming and that where water gets carried over from the regulator and it flashes into steam in the superheater and then the engine will shoot off at high speed uh, because the regulator is no longer controlling it but it's the the water which is flashed into steam which is driving the engine. So the remedy is actually quite straightforward just open the bypass for, and let it run for a couple of minutes in that state the water level will decline a little bit and then close the bypass and carry on. So I hope these hints and tips uh, will lead you to having a happy and successful steaming. Um, these notes are from myself Dave Robinson, uh, otherwise known as Dr. Dave. Bye.